Hi, Stampers. It's Pat with Connect to Create. Our team is made up of myself from Fairless Stamp and Flare and Kathy Andes from Simply Cards by Kathy. And of course, we consider you guys the most important part of our team. So we're glad you're here. Or maybe you're catching the replay, which is fine. Um, each week, Kathy and I plan to bring you a new video to show you a stamping technique or maybe some other creative tip, not really a technique, but just a tip. Um, these videos are meant to be short and our intention is not to show the complete assembly or making of a complete project, but basically to focus on the technique itself. So we hope you'll connect with us each week and bring some of your crafting friends because really, although we loved our crafting, crafting, right? The best part about stamping is the friends we make along the way. So we're glad you're here. And um, if you do enjoy these videos, will you share them with your friends so that they can join us too? That would be great. Um, last week, Kathy shared watering color techniques with pastels. And as we mentioned, um, this is water coloring month, the month of July. And so each week we're focusing right now on water coloring. And today um, I'm going to be using water coloring with ink. Last week, Kathy showed you how to do it with pastels and her card was gorgeous. Um, very detailed flowers from, I think it was called Hello Harvest and it was beautiful. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, you need to go check it out. Um, I've used pastels before, but frankly, I've never watercolored with them. So she's made me want to give it a try too. So I'm definitely going to try it and I hope you guys will too. So today what I'm going to share with ink is I'm calling it organic watercoloring. Uh, you may also see it called color wash or wash of color. Um, but basically what it is, is just scribbling. There's nothing detailed about it. You're just adding a wash of color um, either over an image or maybe it's just over a background. So I'm going to share with you how I do that. And let me flip my camera to the other camera and um, we will get started. All right, I hope I have this set up correctly and that you can hear me. Um, let me just check. It shows my microphone is on, so I'm going to assume you can hear me. If not, well, then maybe I'll have to do it again, but I hope not. So, all right, I, I already did my stamping and I am using a flower from the Wonderful World Celebration Stamp Set. I'm gonna use this little flower down here. It looks kind of like an iris to me. I'm not sure if that's what it is. I'm not a, I'm not a real good flower person, so I don't know all the names. But anyway, I'm gonna use this little one down here. And I've already done my stamping. And because we're watercoloring, I use stays on ink. Um, Whenever we have water involved, we want to use stays on because it is it won't bleed or or wash away, or blend in with your other colors. Um, I did already stamp it so that I'm sure it's dry because I want to make sure it's dry before I do it. Um, it dries pretty quickly, but I figured you didn't need to see me how to stamp anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're gonna start with the flowers. I'm gonna do a couple different ways. Um, I am using Highland Heather for my flowers and Pear Pizzazz for the leaf area. And the first way I'm gonna do it is just to take a wash and go all the way across of each green on the bottom, the Pear Pizzazz and the Heather, Highland Heather on the top. So the way I like to watercolor, this is watercolor paper because with organic watercoloring, as I call it, we do use a little more water than we do if we're doing a detailed kind of a color, coloring with watercolors. So um, 
I like to add a little couple drops of color into my lid. You can also use an acrylic block and pick up some ink from the pad itself if you don't have reanchors. Um, I use the medium size water painter to do this. The tip is, there's a smaller one and then there's one that looks more like a brush. And so this is the one that I'm gonna use for this. And I'll, I'll take it and squeeze where it says push and add a little bit of water onto the lid. And then I can mix it until I get the intensity of color I want. If I want it light, add more water. Um, if you want it dark, then add less water. So now all I'm gonna do is just scribble across the top. And you wanna go reasonably quickly. You don't wanna, you're not trying to get any detail. You just wanna get a wash of color across the top of the, the cardstock. And you can leave white spots. It doesn't have to be all cover. So um, that's basically it. Like I said, it's scribbling. Now, before I change color to the green, um, I do keep a paper towel handy because you want to squeeze a little water and then brush it on a paper towel until you're not getting any more color. Otherwise, you're going to bring the purple into your green and you don't really want to do that. So I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm going to bring in my pear pizzazz. And again, I cleaned my lids before I started, so I have to add a little ink. And again, I'm going to squeeze some water in here. Kind of mix it up. And we'll, we'll start with that, see how it goes, okay? So now I'm just going to wash across the bottom. And if you don't get it all covered, I actually think it, look, I, it looks a little better than if you do totally get it covered. I like it. It's a little more organic looking. So we could leave it there and call it good. See how quick and easy that is? Again, I'm going to clean it off. Now, the color looks a little flat, particularly the Highland Heather, I think. So for this particular one, I'm going to, I'm going to, grab my rich razzleberry, which I already have some ink in the cover. Need a little bit of water. This one's been washed down before. But this will just add like a second shade up here in the purple or in the Highland Heather. And you don't wanna put a lot, but just a little. Just enough to, to give it a hint of another color. And can you see how it adds some depth? Um, where before it was pretty just consistent looking. Um, now we've got a little bit more depth color in the top. And again, to if I want to add depth to the bottom into the green, I can go back. I could add a little more ink to get it a little darker and not water it down quite so much. And again, lightly just come across here and just add a few streaks here and there. And it's totally up to you. You could quit, leave it the way it was, or you can add some. But again, the shading helps give a little bit of depth, I think. So that's one way to do what I call organic watercoloring. And this panel would now be finished, um, set it aside to dry, and we can then use it in a card. And I'll show you a card how I used mine in a minute. But I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and do one more. And this time, instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to do the areas where the leaves are and where the flowers are. So this one, we again, we want it fairly wet. And I'm just going to scribble. Don't, don't overthink. You're not really trying to color in the lines or 
anything like that. If it's not flowing as well as you want, just kind of squeeze your water painter a little bit as you scribble and that'll add some water. You want, you want it to be fairly wet for this technique. A little, a little less wet for if I was trying to color the image, then you need a little more control. But here you really don't want much control. So you're just gonna kind of, and again, you can come back and I'm picking up a little bit more dark just here and there, leaving a little scribble. It really is just a scribble, guys. So don't. the last thing you wanna do with this kind of technique is to overthink it because you're not trying to make it really look like anything at all. I know that sometimes for us control freaks, which I am, it's a little challenging because I have to, I finally have to tell myself, okay, stop, enough is enough because I can overdo it too. Um, and then again, it just really loses that, that organic effect. So now we're gonna do the flowers up on the top. And again, I'm just going to scribble. I need a little more water here because you can see it's a little dry, not flowing quite as much as I want. And I'm squeezing my painter a little bit as I'm doing this just to get a little extra water. Okay, and here I kind of just left. I did not add the third, the third color. Um, I could, I could go back and add a little rich razzleberry if I wanted here, uh, because but because I scribbled a little bit more than it wasn't quite as solid. I'm just going to leave it the way it is, um, if I can. Sometimes I have a hard time leaving it alone. Just add a little bit up there. Okay, and that is organic watercoloring. So now let me show you a, couple, a card that I made with this one right here. And you'd want to let it set aside and dry. If you get it too wet, you can always take your paper towel and dab a little bit of water off from it. If you get it too wet, you can potentially have like this will, when you, if let's say you did the, the Highland Heather and then when you came in, you got your green really wet, and this was still quite wet. The purple could run down into the green. I mean, that happens. But again, it's organic. It's scribbling. So don't worry about it. Just let it go. So here's the card that I made using this particular technique. And you can see you will never get two that look exactly the same. They're all going to look different. Um, but I used Highland Heather on the background. This paper is also part of that celebration bundle called Wonderful World. So this designer paper is part of that bundle. Um, and you can get that for a $100 purchase during celebration between now and the end of August. You can get both the stamp set and the pack of 12 by 12 designer series paper. Um, and then I have a little piece of glimmer paper in here that's from the... Um, Orchid Oasis. So that's my card. Now I want to show you one more card, which is totally different from today's card. But this is another example of organic watercoloring. And you can see here the background. I have the sky and the water up here. Water, sky. All I did was scribble back and forth with my water painter to make little looks like a tree line back here. I scribbled up and down quickly. And then here just made a little grassy patch. So um, I just wanted to show you a little bit what you can do. You can make scene background scenes um, with this technique and you can do more a little more detail like like this other card. So that concludes what I was going to share with you today. I hope you like this. I hope you will give it a try. Let me turn this camera off and my other camera back on.
Okay, I am back. I hope I'm back and I hope when I listen back to this, you could hear me through the whole thing. I know my last one, I had a little bit of problem, lost some sound near the end. Um, but I'm glad you're here today. And again, if you enjoyed this and you have stamping friends, please share it with them. Maybe they'd like to learn some tips too. So thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.